so about, I think it was about three and a half months, four months before my BKFC debut, I was actually at a party in the middle of <laughs> which, you know, everyone was doing, but I was at a party and I actually got sucker punched and I actually got my jaw snapped and I lost six teeth um, and it severed the nerve in my face. I still can't feel the, the, my bottom lip on my bottom teeth now. And that was four months before my BKC debut. I had it operated. I had, I've got plates and I've got screws in my jaw now. Um, and six weeks later, I was out in Dubai quarantining, training by myself to then go out to America and fight bare knuckle. Emilio, the honey Urutia. Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. This episode of the Honey Badger Hour podcast is brought to you by the original Clippers Barbershop. We're live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. It's your boy, the Badger, and today we're back. Thank you all for tuning in, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. All right. Hit the little notification bell below right here. Boop, boop. Check us out at HoneyBudgetLifestyle.com for all of our merch, okay, and upcoming updates that we got on comedy events and all that good stuff, guys. Check us out on social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, across all platforms. Thank you very much, guys, and let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, back in studio, we got a big one. Today, we are joined by former boxer, bare knuckle badass my man i'm really excited for this one coming all the way from england tyler good job thank you thank you for the lovely introduction my man thank you hey i appreciate you coming down to miami brother all right he's living the dream man living the dream here in miami oh man so tell us your story my brother introduce yourself to the fans so i'm tyler Goodjohn. i go by the name of el tornado um, I started boxing at age 10. I'm from a very, a very desolate, small place back home in England. Um, my dad's a farmer. I'm a farm boy. I'm a country kid. Um, yeah, I started boxing at 10 just to, my, to be honest, my parents sent me to the boxing gym just to lose weight because I was quite a fat kid. Um, I lost my first six fights as an amateur um, and just kept at it. I mean, I was 11 years old, so I perhaps didn't have the pressure of my friends telling me a pack it in but uh kept at it and here i am 22 years later <laughs> wow yeah man i saw you at the amateur shows just recently in pfl and i seen you on a few podcasts and yeah. stuff like that so what brings you to miami from england uh so i mean it's a long story it's an interesting story obviously um i signed for bkc the bare knuckle here in america uh what three years ago uh, i come over in the middle of the pandemic uh, by myself the first time I had to quarantine in Dubai and I went on to I then went to Vegas trained by myself in Vegas for about four weeks six weeks um, and then I fought Charles Bennett um, in my in my debut uh, BKFC in Mississippi went back to England and then I got the call did I want to come and do it all again the quarantine in this time I had to go uh, Dominican, uh, Dominican Republic sorry and um yeah, I ended up fighting Luis Palomino, the pound for pound uh, BKFC champ by myself. So, um, yeah, two weeks after that, Luis Pal uh, Palomino run me up. Look, I want you to be part of my management, part of my team. I want you here at my gym. And like I say, here I am. And that's how you end up in Miami. Yeah, so man. fighting Palomino in Miami, in Florida, is what yeah. brought you to start your journey here in yeah, Miami. Man. He's, um, you know, out of everyone, you know, obviously the circumstances weren't great for that fight. And he got on the mic afterwards and just said, look, you know, this guy come over here by himself. No training team, got anyone to be in his corner. Had to quarantine for 15 days in Dominican Republic. And he said, look, I'm basically a fan. Um, and we, like I say, we chatted a couple of weeks later on the, on the phone. And he said, look, I'm a fan of you, man. Like, you, you know, you can't teach what you've got. You come over here looking for me uh, by yourself. And... Yeah, that respect has got me here, got me a work visa, and I'm here for the next couple of years. Wow, that's a great story. My brother, you went and fought. Okay, so yeah, people don't even know, man. During the pandemic, everybody, there's a lot of fights that happened during the pandemic that a lot of guys were like, people don't know some of the training camps, you know, that like people had. Like I know like my buddy, like Dan Hooker, right, in the UFC, when he fought uh, Dustin Poirier, he was training like 
at home, like hitting the bag because he was like in <laughs> Auckland, New Zealand, crazy lockdown. Yeah. And he ended up fighting five rounds in the apex, you know. So then you have there's so many stories I know of, of guys like you, of, of things like this that happened up ended up happening. And we gotta do what we gotta do for the for the to fight because we get paid to fight, right? Hundred percent, man. Um, you know, like my, my job back home in England, I had a had my own gym back in England, obviously with COVID. That shut that down. I actually lost that business. So at that point, I wasn't making any money. And I was <sighs> like, do you know what? Do you know what? This is, let me just say this as well. So about, I think it was about three and a half months, four months before my BKFC debut, I was actually at a party in the middle of COVID, <laughs> which, you know, everyone was doing, but I was at a party and I actually got sucker punched and I actually got my jaw snapped and I lost six teeth um, and it severed the nerve in my face. I still can't feel that my bottom lip on my bottom teeth now. And that was four months before my BKC debut. I had it operated, I had, I've got plates and I've got screws in my jaw now. Um, and six weeks later I was out in Dubai quarantining, training by myself to then go out to America and fight bare knuckle. A lot of people don't know that, but yeah, it was. You got into like a, a fight or something or? All right, so I got into like a altercation at a party. Um, a lot of shouting and everything else, bit of drink involved, you know how it goes. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> and later that night, someone punched me from the side and uh, another professional fighter, he was a uh, professional fighter as well. No way. Yeah, and took my jaw straight off my face. Bro, you got you got sidelined, you side got line. sucker punched by a fighter. By a professional That's even fighter. more dangerous because when you tell me you got sucker punched, you're like, oh, you know, it's I have it. friends who got, I have, I know pro friends, we've gotten into rumbles on the street and like I've seen guys yeah. get stumbled because street fights are crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, man. But to get hit by somebody who knows how to punch and not, that's yeah. terrible, was, man. Um, yeah, it was bad. It, like I say, um, I've plates, I've got screws, I lost six teeth um, and I, I've lost all feeling in my bottom lip. Um, which probably helps for me getting punched now. Yeah. I don't know, but, <laughs> but at the time it sucked. Um, and like I say, looking back on that, that time in my life, I, I'd obviously been signed by BKFC at that point. So I was like, do you know what? I ain't letting this guy ruin my dream of going to America. So yeah. I literally, I had the operation and after like a week, I got back into training. And then like I say, within like, I think it was like six weeks after the operation, I was in Dubai training and then got over to America and then like a month or so later I was um I was fighting. I fought Charles Bennett in my bare knuckle fight. Uh, I think the big the scariest thing was obviously I hadn't sparred. I hadn't sparred since breaking my um since breaking my jaw. And obviously I'm in the gym um I'm out there on my own. I need sparring. So I was in Vegas oh. um and I was at I was at this Mexican gym. I can't think what it's called Johnny Taco's gym in Mex uh in Las Vegas. Full of Mexican fighters and I've gone in there by myself. Obviously I've not fought I've not been hit on my jaw since I've had the operation and I've just jumped in there and I thought there's only one way to find out. <laughs> and I've, I was sparring <laughs> with all these mad Mexicans and they're Landing these bombs, I'm like, well, at least my jaw's holding up to it now, so I'm, I'm sweet. You had a good little test. <laughs> <laughs> you had a good little test. You're like, all right, that's uh, it, man. if you can withhold the Mexicans, you're gonna be all right, bro. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So that's where you did your like your little pre-fight prep in Vegas, right? Yeah, Vegas is yeah. like a good little fight time. Yeah, it was great. I mean, obviously, it was again, it was the pandemic, so it was actually oh, it was yeah. weird, man, because like Vegas was at like 25 percent capacity, so like. Um, it was dead. It was wow. dead. It was like a ghost town. Um, but, I, you know, obviously there's really good fight gyms out there. So I was getting around, like I say, doing lots of sparring and and just basically just training myself. But, um, but yeah, it was a weird time, man. Like literally that strip on Vegas was, was dead. Wow. Yeah. And then, and then you ended up fighting in the hard rock. Then you came down to Florida. Like, so when did you get to Florida? Like fight week? You just showed, you rolled up fight week. Yeah. So hey, no corner for the fight or you had, you brought like one of your mates to hold <laughs> water, to hold water or something. Yeah. So I, um, so against, against Palomino, I quarantined for 15 days in Dominican Republic and I had a 3 PM curfew as well. So it had to be indoors by 3 PM. So it meant having <laughs> to do my training, get it all done and to be indoors by 3 PM. Um, it was a madness. It was a complete madness. Um, um, I've obviously uh, then flown over to Miami. I actually done like a podcast while I was out in Dominican Republic with someone and I had no corner team and uh, I just got on well with this guy. Like we, we were just chatting. He's from Seattle. Shout out Tristan. He's from Mexico, my brother. Um, and I just messaged him a few days later after the podcast and just said, look, mate, 
would you mind coming and do my corner? But like, and he was just like, it'd be an absolute honour. And um, he flew from Seattle to Miami to meet me about three days before the fight and stayed in my hotel, looked after me like you wouldn't believe. Um, and yeah, followed me into battle against Palomino. Wow, man. Yeah. And so that was at 155, right? For yeah, the, 155. For, so, so, so the bare knuckle weights are the same as the MMA weights or, or are they like boxing weights? I'm trying to... They're like so similar, it, right? I think, um, to be honest, we obviously coming from a professional boxing background, like wow. the weights, I, the MMA weights and that are slightly different, aren't they? So yeah. um, I think it's lightweight I'm fighting at in BKFC, but as a boxer, this would be super welterweight. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the yeah. boxing gets a little bit heavy, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so I think you guys are like fighting to similar MMA because you'll be lightweight yeah. in MMA too. Yeah. And then yeah. featherweight would be 145. Yeah, so. all right. Okay, yeah. So there you go. Yeah. yeah, bare knuckle has been like a little revolution, huh? Have you yeah. seen... You've, you've been in bare knuckle since the very beginning. I feel like you're one of the... Uh, you're one of the ambassadors of the bare knuckle. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know if you if you know my my story as in so I I turned professional boxer at, at 18, 19. I think I was just 19 when I had my first fight. Um I won the I was champion of England. I fought for the WBC international. I was in some big fights. Um and I used to make 140 pounds as a boxer, which was very hard for me. I can't 40 pounds. It's like 63k like and yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was horrendous i mean i walk around at 180 perhaps oh wow so anyway i um yeah i've I'm obviously tried i've made that weight for about four or five times in my career i won i won the english title um i should have just uh moved up a weight i didn't um i fought for the wbc and the national i had done mad mad stuff as you know you know, I'm sure you've done it yourself, uh, making weight. Um, and I actually went on a podcast and spoke about all the things that I was doing using saunas, salt baths, and all this. I wasn't glamorizing it, but I was just sort of saying, look, you know, I box like a bag of shit, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and the British Border Control banned me from boxing, took my license away. I remember. I'm so glad we got into this. Yo, you, yeah. man, what, bro? <laughs> yeah. What? Just yeah. for. I always wonder sometimes, like when we talk on podcasts too, it's like, yeah, I'm always wondering, like, are we saying too much? Because the yeah. fighting, yeah. the cutting weight stuff that fighters do is crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. So they didn't like, oh, they didn't like that you kind of shine a light on a truth that didn't like me they've been doing for about. hundreds of oh. years, though. And fighters die in boxing, bro. Yeah. yeah. So they didn't like that heat. So I think what happened, what happened, it, it, in between the time that I'd done the podcast and it actually came out, there was a guy called Scott Westgarth who actually died in an English title fight. And I think it was due to obviously weight you cutting. know weight cutting, and I think the British Border Control just basically used me as an example. Really, um, do you know what I mean? I just, <sighs> you, know, you can't be talking about stuff like that. Can't like I say, I wasn't glamorizing it, but you You're know, just talking about like the grind of of cutting it's weight. We probably like, oh, it? I'm yeah. 20 pounds over this <laughs> week. I took a fight on short notice. Yeah. I had I was running for three days in the sauna suit. I passed out in the it's sauna. Like my, old, my mate, my boy, had yeah. to take me out because I've seen, bro. You see crazy shit, man. It's just like old war stories, basically. Yes. Um, I mean, look, you know, every everyone sees, you know, the the finished the finished product on fight night, but they don't see the horrible, horrible stuff that you know ninety nine percent of fighters go through to make weight f for everything else to get be able to get in that ring. Um, you know, so I just like I say, just told it as a bit of an old war story. Next thing I know, I had a, I had like um, I got a big package through the through the door with all like highlighting all the things that I said wrong and everything else. I rung the board up and just said, "Look, you know what's this all about?" And they just said, "If you want to come and get your license back, you have to bring a lawyer in front of the board." And I just went, "Do you know what? I've been boxing pro boxer for seven years. I was known for being in like fight of the night on big shows, small shows, and just thought how, how disposable." I am like obviously the British Border Control are obviously making money from sanctioning fees, you know, title fights that I'm on, TV fights, and everything else, and just take my my job away. At the time I was 26, that was my job, professional fighter, to just take my license like that. You know how disposable <laughs> you are as a fighter, man. We're like, like cattle yeah. to them. Just you know it's a I'm conveyor saying? belt. They've just got they've got other people coming along. See you later. Make an example of him. Um, I obviously wasn't making them um, enough money to to worry about. I suppose. Yeah, that's the thing. You like, you got to be like, yeah, it's like it's like you got to be undeniable to the point where like they need you. But if not, then you're just disposable. That's well, like the game we're in, right? Uh, you look at these fight. Like, I mean, 
especially in Britain right now. I mean, it's 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 happening. It's happening a lot. A lot of fighters are testing positive for like for steroids and everything else, and they're getting like six month bans. <laughs> and they're like like look at Canelo. He got caught with clenbuterol, didn't he? That yeah. time, and the and the WBC like sort of made him a bit of a out oh. by saying the whole meat thing. Oh, it was in the meat he was eating, it, and he got a six month ban. And you're like, well, Canelo only fights every six months anyway. Like it's a six month ban, and he wasn't even gonna fight in six months. <laughs> like, uh, it's that oh, yeah, like wow. I say, it happens a lot, especially in Britain at the minute. There's there's a lot of fighters. I don't know if you know much about the whole anti Joshua the Dylan White fight that was mo uh, supposed to happen yeah. last week. So what D happened? Dylan White tested positive a week before the fight for a banned substance. Um, Connor Ben, he's there's a whole thing going on with him. So he's tested positive twice for a banned substance. Yeah. Um, and they still reckon he's going to be cleared to fight. Of course he is because he makes everyone too much money. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, so you think that boxing, is it hard? Like, how do they do the regulations and testing like that and boxing commissions? Like, do you guys, do like the fighters agree? Like, yo, let's use this testing thing. And then they're kind of like, yo, or like you guys like stay away from certain bodies yeah. or something like that. I mean, like when, when I was a professional boxer, I only, I only ever got tested on uh, championship fights. Okay. You know, like the WBC and stuff like that. You had a guy there following you about on the night and all that kind of thing. But, um, you know, early on in your career, you it's weren't... money, man. Yeah, yeah, you weren't getting tested. Do you know what I mean? So, I, you know, there's probably a lot of people on all kinds of stuff early on in their career. It's not yeah. until you get to the level where you're on TV and you're, by, you know, you're fighting for big titles that they're, they're testing. Um, so, yeah, like I say, you know, I, I, I don't really get it. Especially at the level like, you know, Anthony Joshua, Dylan White, like you must know that, you know, they got UCAD testing you and stuff like proper big. Um, yeah. You, you must know you're getting tested, but I suppose, look, you know, it's every every percent in it. If you can get a 1%, 2% over your opponent at that level, that's what people are looking for and it's, it's a big difference, so... No, for sure. I, I never, because I know from MMA, but I just don't know about boxing, like mm. if it's too like prevalent, but I'm sure it's got to be, but I don't know yeah. if it's less or more regulated because you know, they got UFC, mm. they have like uh, USADA right now or whatever, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. USADA, USADA so, um, work with the boxing. Uh, oh, yeah. this episode of the Honey Badger Hour podcast is brought to you by the original Clippers Barbershop, located on 14227 South Dixie Highway. Make an appointment today. You can find them on the Booksy booking app or call 305-964-7882. More than 20 plus years in the game. And that's the original Clippers Barbershop. Master Barbers for a Master Fighter. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, boom. Yeah. So they yeah. yeah, all right. So yeah. Like they had the big fight with uh with Terrence. Do you see the Terrence Crawford? Yeah. Boy, what yeah. a fight, right? I watched it again yesterday. Actually. Oh, what a good fight, right? I'm a big fan of uh, of of uh, Terrence, man. This guy is like a real class act too, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like he used to be a wrestler and stuff, you know? Yeah, 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 I heard he was, yeah. Yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah. That was a great fight. Yo, boxing yeah. is like, I feel like boxing is making big noise right now, you know? Yeah, uh, I mean, I've got sort of a bit, uh, I'll be honest with you. Since I, obviously, I mean, I've got a bit of a bitter taste in my mouth that's from the boxing gonna, okay. anyway. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But, um, I mean, I catch the big fights, but I would say I watch a lot more MMA now than I do boxing. I just, I sort of fell out of love with boxing this and I'm like, I'm sure you know it yourself. Like, I, like I say, I was a pro seven, eight years, and being in the game, being around all the people, it's a bullshit game, man. Like, yeah. it's a business, and and it sort of, like I say, it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And actually, when you've been in the game for as long as you have, like, and you find out what it's really all about, it, I don't even like watch it. I don't like watching it because it just like the memories come flooding in of you know being being messed about by managers promoters this is like i say it's a business what is it i heard the other day someone said to me boxing boxing is a, a sport um no yeah boxing is a business made out to look like a sport and it's you know it's it's true it's oh, true man, man. It's, yeah you know it's true um the smoke and mirrors but is that life, bro? I think in every is everything like that. I think it's all like that at the end. Because if you talk to anybody from any industry when yeah, they've had a rough yeah. run, they're like, oh, this fuck. Yeah. So I'm thinking like in I'm the end, sure. oh, you know it's what I'm when saying? It's when money, in it. It's just yeah. when money comes invo uh, involved with it. But like, like even even stupid things like so, uh, you know, about what four weeks ago, I my Instagram got deleted. Oh, right? I was gonna ask you about and that. And I was yeah, on yeah. like 50k. That's the second what time. What happened? The second time I've been do? deleted. Right. Second time I've been deleted. And so 
I'll put up a post. Um, I mean, I don't know how much I can say about well, this. Well, we're not live, so we'll just fucking delete. We'll, have, well I'll probably have to edit out, but yeah. sorry, we'll just so talk. We talk I, really, don't I worry. Was, I was I'm chilling. signed under Matchroom Boxing with Eddie Hearn. Uh-huh. Um, and like I said to you earlier, I fought for the English title. And, yeah. And then I got offered a big title fight at the 140 pounds, and I should have moved up anyway. I remember being in, in the office at Matchroom, and I was like, I need to move up. I'm killing myself at this weight. I can't do it anymore. Anyway, I was promised, look, even if you lose in this fight for the WBC, I'll sign you on a free fight deal worth this much money. Da, 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 da. I'm 22, 23 years old. I'm thinking, right, okay, I've made it. I'm going to be signed on a free fight deal. Even if I lose this fight, I'm going to be on good money, everything else. So I took the fight. I thought I'll do make this weight one more time. Um, I posed for the contract and everything else. It wasn't the actual sheet of paper, but it was like, oh, we'll just pretend, you know, we're signing the contract like that. Went into the fight, lost the fight, never heard from Eddie Hearn again in my life. Um, and I actually have the picture of us signing this fake contract. Um, and I posted, uh, look, look, it's a bit like PTSD. Like I say, with promoters and managers, when you've got people trying to fuck you over all the time, like you're you're constantly watching over your back and everything else. And uh, I posted this picture about a month ago just saying, look, you know, about this fake contract, my story will be told. You know, I know I'm one of many fighters that are being fucked. You know what I mean? But um, <gasps> so I posted that picture. Boom, next thing I know, been deleted off Instagram. So, um <laughs> I mean what yeah, yeah. Wow, the matrix bro. baby the matrix is that shit boxing. is real dog yeah ah yeah bro they got some power yeah so obviously I tagged Eddie Hearn I, I tagged him and mentioned him in it so he's seen it all or there was comment like I've got 50k I've got comments Eddie Hearn's this is that and next thing I know boom I'm gone I'm gone I've my my Instagram's gone so um, that's the first one. Or that's the last one. That that's was the, last the one. second one. So the first time I got deleted. Um, to be honest, I probably should have got deleted. Oh, why time. do Why do they delete? Them? What, <laughs> like, how many did you have the first time? Twenty three k the first Damn, time. Damn! So you get a big ass uh, bump. Yeah. How do you get? So you get it from the from the fight from the uh, the fifty k. You got it from bare knuckle. Like, how do you get that big bump back? Yeah, quick, just huh? from for um yeah, it come back fairly quick. Um, like I say, I've had two accounts deleted. It wow. come back fairly quick and and. You know, like at the end of the day, bare knuckle boxing is clickbait. <laughs> you know, you know I'll put a picture of my face up after a fight. I'm like, I'm getting likes and I'm getting yeah, views. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's, that's dope. people love violence, blood. So it's yeah. Oh um, man, that's awesome, bro. All right, no, that's not awesome, but all right. So the the first deletion, what happened? The first deletion. <laughs> right. So Let's we're, get into it. we're digging it. into a bit more of our story now. So, um, <laughs> so. When was this? So three years ago, I was actually engaged to a porn star. Okay. So I was with a porn star and obviously she was working and she's a well-known porn star, works here in America, England. And... Um, <laughs> so you were she, like boxing, but you were bare knuckle already too? I was bare knuckle, knuckle. yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, a, that's, I actually, a, that's, a, that's a power duo right there. <laughs> Do you know what? It, was, it worked because we were almost like a bad Disney couple. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> it's like the opposite of like yeah. coming home to. And it was funny because back in England, so the promotion, uh, the bare knuckle promotion, I was world champion at BKB back home in England, um, was shown on the porn channel. Right, so I had all the porn girls doing their walking entrances, all the cards and everything else. So I'm obviously chatting back backstage with one of the girls, and then you know, sort of gone from there. Um, but um, yeah, so we, we were together a year. I mean, it was a it was a bit of carnage, really. And like I say, it was like a bad Disney couple type thing. Um, and I actually <laughs> went into a little bit of porn myself because obviously. We were sort of like working together. Yeah. Is it like, <laughs> um, like OnlyFans style or like? Yeah, OnlyFans and stuff like that. Um, There's and some then, bread in there, right? There's yeah, oh, money, yeah, serious money, man. Oh. Like women, I mean, you've got to be consistent with it. Like, but there's some serious money for, for women to be made. I mean, for, for guys, like there's a lot of um, a lot of gay guys. Oh, money, yeah. Mate. The gay guys <laughs> pay the money, mate. 
Um, so th there's money to be made. But um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I wasn't obviously posting anything up too rude on my Instagram, but I was putting, let's say, suggestive pictures, perhaps. And um, I got warned once or twice and then boom. And then they, oh. they don't play around. No, no, no. Oh my gosh! And the second, so the second one, you're already like on probation already. So maybe when yeah. Eddie Hearns just called one guy, yeah, like, oh, yeah, we've been yeah. waiting, to get there. <laughs> waiting to get rid of this guy's account. This guy was already on our <laughs> on our on our uh, no Radar. fly zones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Wow! So you started. So that's how you started the bare knuckle journey. Started through uh, the craziness with the boxing. So I understand what the boxing thing with sour taste in your mouth. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll yeah. tell you what. That um, which is the fight that we saw. That got a big robbery just recently that oh, I got recently. so pissed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lomachenko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I see this guy fight, all I've been hearing Lomachenko, right? I hear all this hype, Lomachenko, Lomachenko for years, you know? All the MMA fighters are trying to do yeah, the Lomachenko yeah, yeah, yeah. footwork. But I never see him fight live. I just watch highlight reels, right? Yeah, yeah. First time I fight, I watched him fight live was like, I don't know, a while back when he fought Teofimo Lopez. Yeah. He lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, damn, it's the first time I see this guy. Like, I actually sit down, had him going on the stream. Mm. He lost, but then I watched him fight again, and I thought he won the last fight against uh, Henny, 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 yeah, Henny yeah, David yeah. Henny. And it was like, yo, that boxing shit, I got so mad, bro. It's yeah. just like, this is why people don't watch this shit. It's just so, like, it's just like you were bullshit, saying, bro, and you, you can see, like, with the 32 guys in yeah. the ring, they're all, you know, all those yeah. guys, are, everybody in there is making probably more money than the yeah. fighters, bro. Yeah. Imagine that. Uh, well, you know uh, what I'm saying? All these fucking suits in there, all these bean counters, dog. Well, let, let me tell you a story. Right? <gasps> so I tell this story to everyone when we talk about boxing. Like I said, I was, I was 23 years old. I um, I fought for the English English title. Uh, against a guy called Ricky Boylan, who at the time was 12 and 0 in boxing, which is obviously very hard to do. Um, he was Match Room's golden boy. He was having like documentaries made about him on TV and everything else. So anyway, I've put my name forward. I said, "Look, I want to fight your golden boy." To be honest, I hounded him for for days and days and days and days. Um, so I was brought in as your way fighter. You know, you you know the situation yeah, the B, when you're the, the B, B side. side. Um, the fight was the fight before Anthony Joshua. He was fighting for his first title, packed out O2 Arena, about Ooh. fifteen thousand people. Um, so I've gone in that fight as the away fighter, and I, I swear to you, I boxed this guy's head off. Head, I boxed his head off. Right. Anyway, it's come to the decision. Like on one card, it's a draw, and I just turned around to my trainer and said, "They're gonna fuck me. They're gonna fuck me." Luckily, I've, 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 you know, I, you, it was so clearly that I'd won. The other two judges have gone for me and I won it on a split decision. But when they first said that first draw, I was like, they're going to fuck me. You know, I'm the away fire. They're going to yeah, fuck yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Um, but that fight, I could say, co-main event, it was on primetime TV. I'm fighting a guy who's 12 and 0 for a big title and I made four and a half thousand pounds. That's about just over five thousand dollars. And I've trained 10 weeks for that. I'm on TV. I'm on everything else. And pe people are thinking I'm on big money because I'm on TV. They have no idea. And I'm just like, that's I've just made $5,000. And that's before my manager takes his bit. My cut man takes his bit. My other people take their bit. I'm probably walking away with like, what, $3,000? <laughs> in, in 10 weeks of training for a 10-round title fight uh, against a 12-0 guy. That's boxing, man. There's There's... The undercars are terrible, right? <sighs> like, it's just... Do you know what it is with boxing? It's, it's it, like everyone sees the Canelos, the Mayweathers earning 70, 80 million, but they, there's no in-between. There's like, there's you're either... Like, I've, I know people who have had to pay, you know, the ticket scenario. You know, if you don't sell tickets, you're not worth anything to a promoter. I've known fighters have to pay out of their own pocket because they've not sold enough tickets to fight. Do you know what I mean? They're, pay yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah. not making any money. They're paying out their own pocket to fight. Or they give away um, tickets and have to pay for yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a business. Like we said, it's a business. Sometimes the fight costs you money if you think about it. Right? <laughs> if, you get, if you get injured or something like that, what if you get injured and you're out for like two months, you know, and then how are you going to make money in between? I thought, um, I, I was fighting a guy called Johnny Garton who, um, he was the British champion. Um, I trained for about 10 weeks for that fight I, and, and I've actually got a daughter and the, my daughter has been born a month later so I needed this money, do you know what I mean? And um, I, I broke my hand about 10 days out from the fight. So obviously you can't fight, you don't earn money, I can't work because I broke my hand. So actually I've just spent 10 weeks spending money on training camps and everything else to not get paid 
because I broke my hand and not be able, be able to work either. So I'd come out of that like <laughs> bad. And that's that's the reality for most fighters. Yeah, you get hurt and then you get hurt and you don't yeah. get paid for the training camp or for the month's training. Yeah, you know, yeah, you gotta get, yeah. you gotta show up. Mm -hmm. You got, yeah, I busted my ankle like, uh, yeah, I, I remember I cracked my ankle like the last wrestling session of the of the of the camp. I was like fully prepared, ready to go. Pop my ankle. I'm on crutches now for like for a month. You know what I'm saying? I could barely even teach. You know, like I'm trying to, and I teach jujitsu, so it was like, yeah. And then you just lose that cash. You're just like, yo, it's very disheartening, man. Like, yeah. A lot of the a lot of the battle, right, in this game is just I know so many guys. How many guys you know that like they never really got their career popped off? If they're a little bit older because it's just injuries, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh man, so you broke your hand? Like what sparring? You think you broke yeah, your hand or it was, something? Yeah, I was over. Um, I was I was sparring and it was funny. I had 16 ounce gloves on. Guy had a head guard on and I threw an overhand right and I hit him like sort of like on the forehead um, and I got a spiral fracture in my hand. I mean, I've had I've had operations on my hands and that previously, but um, yeah, it was a spiral. They actually call it a boxer's fracture because the only I, way you can break it is by punching something. I've had that one before, yeah, uh, before um, I knew how to train. Yeah, so it was, um, yeah, yeah, frustrating. Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> man. Do you, all right, so... Do you train? How do you feel like boxing compared to bare knuckle? That's good that I have you for like with all those boxing fights and now having all these bare knuckle fights. Yeah. Uh, the impact is it worse. Do you think the impact with the big gloves is more like you think bare knuckle is more cutting and like dangerous on visuals, but boxing is more brutal, or do you think mm -hmm. vice versa? Yeah, um, I have a theory on that with again, the big gloves. Yeah, again, I tell people all the time: um, boxing is way more dangerous than bare knuckle. Ten, twelve, three minute rounds of non-stop getting you know hit around the head and you know you look at the people who get brain injuries die in the sport you know it's often more often than not it's the long distance fights again where they've dehydrated themselves as well um the long distance fights the you know the prolonged punishment um people get bleeds on the brain and everything else i mean yeah okay bare knuckle facially the damage is obviously a lot worse but you're just not taking them punches like you do with, with a glove you can't you can't you can't even hit as hard with a glove. Like you know, when you've got a glove on, you can really put some power behind it. Especially when you're, you know, in professional boxing, you've almost got a cast underneath that as well. So you can really whack. Um, you know, so and obviously five two minute rounds as well, bare knuckle. So it's very it's very it's very quick, you know, facially. And don't get me wrong, I'll come out of fights and people will be like, Wow, you know, my face will be fucked up. But um yeah, you know, you come, you come out of a 10, 12, three minute round boxing match. You don't know the damage that's been. Yes. Yeah, you probably take and wait. You to, you take. Yeah, I always have that same theory. They even say that with MMA. You know, like that MMA. There's like the knockouts are more sporadic and stuff like that. But you're not taking and the standing eights too with boxing. You yeah. can get dropped a couple of times in a fight. So then that's just multiple. You know, and then who knows the fights that rock the. Po Cause you don't have to. Your butt doesn't have to hit the ground to no. be a concussion, right? Nah, nah, if it's nah. a flash, you know, like right? Is that like I don't know what con calls a concussion on, mm. but well, like you think when you're when you're on the ropes in a boxing match, you take one, you take another one, you take another one, you take another one. It's you know you can take a combination of about five or six shots, be knocked out on the second shot, but take three, four more that you really don't need to take. I mean, I know it happens, especially in UFC and that, when they're knocked out on the floor and they'll jump on top of them. Yeah, the ground and pound. Yeah, but um, but yeah, it's just, you know, with boxing, it's that prolonged punishment, isn't it? Just getting rattled around the head for 10, 12 rounds. Yeah, man. And um, um, the sparring and boxing sparring is very brutal, right? Mm -hmm. you're, so you're from a boxing gym. You grew up in boxing gyms yeah. coming up as a kid, I was, right? Um, so, it's rough, huh? Oh, man. It's different. Was, um, I mean, it's really made me who I am today. Like, yeah. I started going down to my pro gym, uh, pro boxing gym when I was, like, 16. And <laughs> I was... I was I could always grow a little bit of a beard and everything else. And I think they thought I was a lot older than I was. And I remember going down there and sparring like um, I sparred some good fighters, man. People who went on to do big things. Um, and I got smashed to bits. Like them first first couple of years as a pro, really, or going down to the pro gym. You know, you I got taught some lessons, man. I really took some beatings, and I think that's half the reason why. They probably like me so much because there was a few times that they probably laughed when I <laughs> when I left. Like that little kid just got his ass kicked, and I'll be back the next day. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. they respected that, um, and it's definitely made me who, who I am today. Like I say, I, there were no punches being pulled early on in my career. I was really, um, <laughs> I really got levered a few times.
Especially in the, and then did you have a coach coming up and shit like this or like, did we kind of like, uh, oh, so to be honest, like my training now, like you look him up, Tony Sims back in England, he's probably one of the, well, I mean, Anthony Joshua, Darren Barker, John Ryder, Kevin Mitchell, Ricky Bett, like all world champions. He's a massive trainer. And I sort of feel like where I was so young and I was in a, don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful for being in that gym. But I was used as a bit of a sparring partner. Yeah. Um. Uh. For for the world champions, do you know what I mean, and, and stuff like that. And like I say, by the time I was like twenty two, twenty three, um, ugh, the wars I've been in in sparring. Yes. The wars. With, like I say, we're world champions. We used to spar. I remember a guy, Ricky Burns, world world lightweight champion, fought Terence Crawford, went twelve rounds with him. Great, great fighter. Um. And before my English title fight, I was sparring 12 four-minute rounds with 30 seconds rest with him. Four-minute rounds. Four-minute rounds. An extra minute rest. on top to yeah, be, like, yeah, yeah. more ready. And, and like... And you, getting him ready for a big fight. And getting him ready for his world <sighs> yeah. title fight. And, and the thing is, like, what was happening, you know, I was feeling amazing. And I was sparring amazing. But where I was used as a bit of a sparring partner, it like, right, I got him ready for his fight. And then my fight would be a month afterwards. By the time my fight come around, I'd had the fight knocked out of me, man. I would, like, I'd been in so many gym wars. Um, I got to the fight and there were times I was like, wow, I'm tired. You don't want to, like, yeah, yeah. The, the, you left the fight in the gym. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, you hear about it all the time, in the, particularly in these big, big gyms, like the young lads do get used as a sparring partner. And yeah. looking back on it, I mean, although now I can look back on it with some fond memories and stuff like that, I was definitely used as, <laughs> as a sparring partner. Yeah, that's a good point that you make. That's actually something that's like, you got to like kind of, uh, that's actually a good topic to talk, that's a good subject to talk on on the podcast for like younger fighters who listen because sometimes you can get lost in the sauce and it's not, you just got to understand the game, right? And you can't, like you're saying with the, like, you just can't, you can, in um, big gyms, guys are going to need like amateurs and like up and comers to help them prepare for sure. Because you know, like, and I realize this too, you can't just train with guys um, like your level, because that's how you're gonna get fucking hurt. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? Or sometimes it's not good for your confidence for before a fight. You know, like you need to have all levels, right? You need to yeah. get the guys you can work on, the guys you get your defense on. Yeah. But young fighters, they do get like sometimes you could think you're like you're a part of something that's going on, like big, but you don't really realize you're just a punching bag. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, and you are getting good work in, but then you got to be careful that you're not. Sometimes, sometimes getting tough is not getting better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, at the time I was very naive. Like I say, I was like 21, 22, 23. And I was like, wow, I've got the chance to spar a world yeah. champion. I should be massively grateful. Do you know what I mean? But when you're getting used three times a week f- for eight weeks, um, yeah, <laughs> it definitely catches up you know with you, man. For yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's so important. That's why it's so good. Like, um, they're saying that the MMA is like they're doing like a lot of group training. Boxing is very like solo dolo, right? Mm. You notice that like guys kind of get like their coach, yeah, and they can kind of like travel to gyms, look yeah. for partners, and they do like their work and stuff like that. Mm. Where MMA is like right now is like still like very team oriented, but I think mm. MMA is gonna start getting more and more towards that too. Where like yeah. you have a champion or a fighter, who will have like a couple of guys that he uses for all his things, but then like the super gyms, I don't know how much longer those were. Everybody just training together in a big room. You yeah. Know? yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, like like I say, I'm I'm very grateful of where I was and everything else. But um, yeah, you know, where now the gym I'm at here in Miami, it's nice because it's sort of gone full, full circle a bit now. You know, at the age I'm at and how long I've been doing it, I'm now giving advice to to the youngsters coming up in in, in the gyms and that. And you know, I'm with a trainer now as well. Who I mean, we spar, we spar like once, twice a week. But he he will he doesn't want it to be all out war and to be honest for a long time that's all I knew inspiring yes it's all I knew like when people you know and don't I don't I think people probably now like I probably spar a little bit hard at times but that's just because that's how it was do you know what I mean it's not me being a douchebag or nothing like that and trying to take liberties that's just how it was you know I'm always used to hard sparring um but it's it's it comes not, with a call. I yeah, think in the be- yeah. I think in the beginning you need it. I think in the yeah. beginning you need it. You need you you need it. You need it. But there's yeah there's definitely now like I'm going into fights now so much fresher because of oh, not all the heavy sparring. It's, yeah, the he- there's a fine line because I feel yeah. like in, like in your first year or two sometimes you kind of need that like that like blindness and just kind of like get that gain that toughness and you mm. got to know like you can dig deep and put it in you especially when you're less technical mm. but. Obviously, the old, especially the older you get, and like mm. the closer you get to a fight, you know, you just want to be properly, uh, yeah, 
coach and stuff. Man, so you're training at uh, Digitas right now, right yeah, now? That's yeah. a great gym, bro. Yeah, That's a classic it, gym, love man. It. Yeah. Uh, Digita, I've trained at Digitas in his old spot when he used to be in another spot right. uh, in Kendall area, you know? Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's great, man. How do you like yeah. training over there? And, uh, and how's it been it. helping your... Do you feel like like a Cuban-style boxing kind of compared to your yeah, English yeah, yeah, style yeah. that you had before? So I come over here about a year ago um, to do my first training camp. And and to be honest, like coming from, like I say, the like traditional British boxing, like, you know, my head movement's very good and I come forward and everything else. Um, coming over here, obviously the, the Cubans, their footwork is, I mean, it's top notch. Like that's why they're always winning the Olympics and everything else, you know, their their footwork is amazing. Even the heavyweights, they're so light on their feet. Um, so now I'm obviously learning all the footwork, which is, you know, like I say, quite different from what I'm used to. Um, but at the same time, I love it because you know, I'm tw 22 years deep into a career and I'm still learning new things. So it's cool. But, um, yeah, it's difficult. Like, watching Lewis Palomino, like, and understanding that 10 years ago, he was a brawler, wanted to have a war with everyone, like, fighting with his heart, you know, and everything else. And then to look at him now, like, his footwork, how, like, how clever he is in a fight. Um, and that's come from being with Tigri, do you know what I mean? That's the, that's, I love Tigri, man. I think he's such a good coach. I mean, it's, it's funny because obviously I'm from England. There's a little bit of a language barrier. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's got to be hilarious. He's yeah. Wait a minute, but didn't yeah, jab. He's, you know, he's, like, and he's all out. He's yeah, all passion. Yeah, heart, you know? so much passion. This man. guy is like, yeah, yeah. he's energy, man. Yeah, he's but good. I just like, I totally get everything he shows me and that, and I just have a really, really good relationship. And also I feel that like when I'm fighting, I feel, like I say, the passion. He just he wants he wants you to win so much, yes. right? um, and that to me for a trainer that means more than anything. Because like I'm in there, I want to win for you. I want to win for me and you. We're a team. Like I'm winning for both of us. Do you know what I mean? And when I'm in there like that, that's I'm indestructible. Um, I feel you. How important is that for to have a coach like that? Right? Oh, There's yeah. nothing. I for me, I feel like I like yeah. Like you want to have a guy in there that like you will die for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, it makes a tremendous difference, bro. Does, At least for yeah. me. Yeah. Some guys are soldiers. I know some guys, yeah. they can just go alone and they're going to fight the same. But when I have somebody in there that like, when you really don't want to disappoint them, like a father figure almost. Yeah, yeah, You know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly, yeah. Uh, I had it, you know, you know, in the pro boxing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've really found that with Tigre. I just like the passion. I just, it really, you know, when I go and train with him, I want to train hard for him. And yeah, so I know I found the right coach. Yeah. Because I feel that that motivation, that inspiration every time I'm with him in the gym. I feel that. So I know I've got the right coach. No, and listen, bro. You said you've had like a long career, right? Bro, you started when you were young. But mm -hmm. like we were talking about it before the podcast, right? Uh, what the good is now, we're both in our 30s. But when you get into your 30s now, you have all the experience from the 20s. Mm -hmm. But yo, 30s like the new 20, bro. Mm -hmm. Look at Terrence Crawford. Look at all the champions right now. Israel Desanya, Alex yeah. Volkanovski. They're all like in their mid-30s right now. 33 to like 35, well, 36. The thing is, you look at Terrence Crawford. Like I, I said to you, I watched that fight yesterday. And like, the oh, man, just amazing shot selection. And that doesn't come from... That comes from experience. That doesn't come from being like, you know, 20, 21, 22, 23. That comes from his, being, his whole career. He's got that shot selection to the point he's 35 now. And that experience and that shot selection and everything else, like, you can't compete with that. Do you know what I mean? That experience has got him to that level. Um, you know, like I say, I had I had the the youthfulness and everything else when I was like 22, 23. But man, was I naive. Like... I really, really wish, and, I, and I'm going to be going back to boxing, doing some glove boxing while I'm out here in Miami. Nice. And I feel like at this age, compared to when I was 23, like, it's just night and day. It's, it's just confidence, experience, just everything. I'm a man now. Yes. I was a kid then. Um, and people who haven't done combat sport perhaps won't understand that but there's a big difference from being a kid against a 30 year old man who's been in the game a long time um the yeah. mentality <laughs> yeah the mentality it's is totally different, it's different. Just, you can't explain like, it yeah you just can't like you're so you've been there you've done it like when yeah. you're a kid that doubt's still in the back of your head when you're in them big fights you haven't been there before and you're like shit i haven't been here but like man i'm tried and tested so many times now when i walk to the ring i'm like i'm 
I'm about this. I know yeah. I'm about this. Especially now with the experience too. You get a younger guy, you're like, listen, motherfucker, listen, bro. When you were 13, mm-hmm. when you were still sucking, yeah. when you were still watching Power yeah. Rangers, yeah. Yeah. I was out here fighting the best in the world, getting after it. So that's just gonna. No, if someone you... if someone offers me a 22 year old now, I'm thinking I'm gonna old man you. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna beat you down. Like I'm gonna teach you a thing or two. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, yeah. That's how it feels. Yes, a hundred percent. And I feel like that's what's so cool about fighting, man. Like it, the longer if you the, the, if like if your brain is still in it, right? You have your heart has to be in it, right? That's mm-hmm. number one. Once your heart is out, you gotta get out because it gets dangerous. But exactly. as long as your heart, like the spirit, like the fighting spirit, they have that a lot in anime, like an Ippo uh, and stuff. If your fighting spirit is still strong, man, like you can always get better and and learning, and then that yeah. experience is is. It's the number one thing. That's why you love, like, there's so many, like, Matt Brown. You ever seen, like, UFC fight, like, old school yeah. guys when they just put it on these guys? So that experience is invaluable, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. For sure, bro. Right? Mm. Do you feel like the boxing, man, bare knuckle is such a new sport, right? So you get, like, guys that are bare knuckle fighters that they just start bare knuckle, right? Mm. Cheers. You got guys that are just bare knuckle, right? Mm. You got guys MMA transitioning to bare knuckle. Yeah. And then you got boxers doing bare knuckle. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, do you feel like, I definitely think that boxers have a little bit of the, or is there something in the MMA guys this, that have this tenacity? Yeah. I had this conversation with someone the other day. I actually think the MMA guys are doing better. Okay. Because of the clinch. And look, I'm going to, a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this. They're going to hate me for saying this. <laughs> That's good. But some boxers are pussies, man. They're pussies. Like MMA guys are rougher, tougher. Some boxers are pussies, like... Like prima donna? Know, yeah, like, you know, they've got these big gloves on. You take them gloves off, let, they're not used to getting cut. And, you know, with boxing, the guys that I particularly struggled with in boxing, I would annihilate in bare knuckle because they were the flick jab, run, 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 run away, run away, run away. You can't do that in bare knuckle. Like, at some point, you're going to get hit on the chin bare knuckle and then we're going to see what you're really about, you know what I mean? Um... Yeah, a lot of people aren't going to like that, but I, I've been around boxing all my life, like I say, and you've got them people like myself who will fight anyone, anytime, anywhere, but you've got some you've got some pussies in boxing as well. I got you. You got the, um, the pretty box, because it's like the beautiful, the, pretty the sweet science, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the sweet science only goes so far in Bernoko, because yeah. Bernoko is like a sweet war. <laughs> and, and... Like again, you you'll know all about it. You got the the bully fighters when it's on when they're on top, everything's sweet. But when they've got facing a bit of adversity, and you see it, you do see it a lot, particularly in BKFC, the pro boxers coming over here and they're taking jabs and they're going down on one knee. Like nah, I'm all right. Like um, it's a different ball game getting hit with a glove and hit with a bare knuckle. The impact is different, right? Do you um. It's, I mean, like, the best way to explain it, because, like, pretty much, like, for me particularly, like, for every punch you're taking, you're pretty much getting cut, and it's like a burn, like a burn. And a lot of boxers aren't used to seeing their bl- own blood. Do you know what I mean? They get freaked out. Like, whereas with me, I'm, I mean, I'm quite lucky. <laughs> I bled quite a lot as a boxer, so I'm used to it. But fighters panic, man. When they see their own blood and they're cut and everything, they panic. Um, and it's... It's the calmness in the chaos. That's what I tell people. Like, bare knuckle is about having that calmness in the chaos. And I think Lewis Palomino, he's the ultimate bare knuckle fighter because he's got the calmness in the chaos. I'm not quite there yet. I like having to fight too much and and, and that costs me with getting cut and, and everything else. But once you've got that calmness in the chaos nailed down like, like Palomino has, where he can box, move, do what he has to do to win... Um, it's a different ball game. I was talking to somebody about that the other day. Um, we were saying like, but when he was kind of like born for uh, bare knuckle mm. because he was like you said in his MMA career he was like a crazy. You know what's crazy is in bare knuckle his best weapon is kick, bro. He has that yeah. low kick. He has the low kick of death that he used mm. to kill people with for years. Yeah. You know? And they don't even know the bare, like he's not even he can't even do that in bare knuckle. But yeah, now he's like super more technical than he than he was in uh, yeah. in MMA, right? His footwork's just like like I say like because I'm with he obviously with his coach. And I'm learning all what he's he's doing, and I'm sort of doing it, and I'm not quite there yet. And then I see I see him doing, I'm like, it's effortless. Do you know what I mean? His footwork is, and it's it's tough. It's tough. Like it's very tough. Like coming from from the background I've had. Um, so yeah, I've just ultimate respect, man, because you know it's it's a, it's a hard thing to learn. The footwork and everything, and angles. Yeah, and angles, yeah. footwork, just, yeah. It's one thing to, like, fight and go forward, but it's another thing to fight, go forward, and think, just, and move, yeah. and... 
I think like the, the biggest thing for me, and and I don't know if I'm ever gonna get over it. I mean, I hope that like I have really good chats with Palomino, and he's you know he gives me a lot of advice because like I say, you know, ten years ago he was the fighter that I am. That you know I like to get stuck in, have a war and everything else, and it's just like look, you know, you've got to do what you got to do to win, and probably my my. A weakness is mine is that I like to entertain the fans too much, and at the end of the day, that doesn't always win fights. No, I know I have it, yeah. You know, and and I like being a crowd pleaser, but again, that doesn't always win you fights, and that doesn't win you belts. So, um, you know, I need to take that on board and and you know see what see how he's turned his career around. Yeah, so that's one. It's, that could be one of the things that's about being in Miami, right? Mm-hmm. Being moving here now, mm-hmm. this is one of the things you can add on to your game in Arsenal, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you started Bare Knuckle, what was the name of the show? And was England? Where do you think Bare, Bare Knuckle is big right now? Because it's like I feel like it's been like a big takeover all mm. over. But uh, it's it's compared to England and America, like where do you think it's bigger right now? Uh, I'd say it's getting bigger. It's exploded over here in America. Um, it was it was big back in the UK. Um, without trying to blow too much smoke up my own ass, <laughs> nah, get um, in there. Bro. I saw it, like I had three fights, Bare Knuckle fights. Um, in BKB back in the UK and they all got a fight of the night and I fought a guy in my third fight who was the world champion Sean George who has had like 22 bare knuckle fights he's a legend I mean hard 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 guy and I beat him in my third fight so there was a lot of uh, hype around me and then then obviously I've been signed to come over to America America's just a much bigger place in general Uh, and I feel like like especially here in Florida, they love their fighters here, man. Yeah. They love their fighters. Like here in Miami, like I get so much love, man. I'm, I'm walking around places. Really? Yeah, I got so much love. I'll go back home to my hometown of Ely, Cambridgeshire. No one will say nothing to me. I walk down South Beach, I'm on Muscle Beach. People come up to me for photos and I'm like, wow. So BKFC is really getting big. I went to a amateur kickboxing show um, last week. Everyone was coming up to me for pictures and that. So... It's, yeah, it's definitely getting a lot of exposure. Yeah, the hard rock fights, mm. uh, they go crazy, right? Mm. Those yeah. plays, that place goes mad for the yeah. fight, for the bare knuckle fights yeah. at the hard rock. And the walkout, the presentation, it's a new phenomenon. I ain't yeah. gonna lie, I kind of love it. Like, I'm so intrigued yeah. by it. That's why I love talking to you guys on yeah. the podcast, you know? Because I'm always intrigued by the bare knuckle fighter stories, you know? Yeah. It's something just raw about it, yo. Yeah. It's great. It's wild, man. Would I love you it. try it? I don't know, though. I don't know. I'll maybe do bare knuckle MMA. Yeah, yeah, bare knuckle MMA. Because yeah, that would be more yeah. my field. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I told myself, like, even if I fight again, I was like, I'm going to stop striking, bro. I need yeah. to go back to my grappling roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you right. know, but honestly, listen, you know, it's funny, bro. Um, The only problem that would be with bare knuckle or um, the scar I got in my head, bro, I got, ah, oh, same shit that happened to you, bro. I got, fu- I got, I got jumped. I got bottled. <sighs> And I got like 38 stitches in my head. They almost killed me, bro, in Thailand. Just just in the yeah, pandemic. Thailand, yeah. In January, I got jumped by like an Australian biker gang, bro. It was crazy rumble. Same thing. I was like at an after, out at night. You know what I'm saying? And I tried to break up a fight. Yeah. And these hooligans jumped me, bro. Like these 10 Aussie guys, all jacked, like 200 yeah, pounders. Yeah, yeah. You know, they started punching me from everywhere. And then I remember like, um, I'm trying to like, they have my hands. Like they kind of like got me grab here and I'm like trying to fucking break through and I'm feeling all the punches and you know, all the punches feel normal. Like yeah, it's like regular yeah, yeah, fist, yeah. like, pow, 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 you know, and you can hear it. Yeah, and then yeah. one of them was like, pow, pow. Nah. something sounded real different. You know what I'm saying? And they broke the bottle. Pow, and it was like a big one, a quart bottle, you know, they broke the bottle and he stabbed me in the head, bro. So then I'm like, fuck. And I feel my face. And then as soon as you, I already knew right away what happened, you know? But I was just trying not to get knocked out when they jumped me. Yeah, you feel yeah, me? Because yeah, I was yeah. like, I had a friend who got stomped out in high school, and he was yeah. like in a wheelchair. He was like kind of like yeah. If you were on the floor, they would like yeah. yeah. And then I'll just stomp yeah, you out, yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah, I was just yeah. trying to stay awake and like yeah, catch all the punches. Yeah, yeah. Thank God. But yeah, same thing. So I'm, that's the only thing that kind of freaks me out now. Like, oh, bro, a couple bare knuckles on this, that shit might open. That would be crazy yeah, well, ass scar. <laughs> Thirty six. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So yeah, it's gonna yeah. be hard to hide. Yeah, yeah. I did fight MMA when it was like in the first, like pretty fresh with it. Yeah. And nothing happened, but right. fuck. I don't know. I did get elbowed, and uh, fuck. I, my my chin is a. Uh, you said you have a numbness in your gum. I had yeah, the same yeah, thing, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got uh, I got hit once, and then like my teeth on this top. I can't the top part of my gums. I can't feel. So yeah. that's normal, huh? Yeah, yeah. My yeah, fighters yeah. get that shit. It's never gonna come back. Like this. Yeah, like the doctor said to me, they were like, <laughs> you, you might get the feeling back, you might not, and I've not got it back. I mean, I've had what four fights since i broke my jaw so it probably doesn't help the fact that i'm still getting punched on it <laughs> it's oh. not really healing but yeah <laughs> oh my god you broke. so do you feel like your jaw got 
Uh, do you feel like it's stronger with the since you got it broke? Yeah, My boy Shea bit. Walsh broke his jaw, but he said it when he came back, it was fucking strong. Yeah, but then he broke it again. Bit, yeah, so I mean, it. I've got plates. I've got plates here. Yeah, so, I mean, hell yeah. should be. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, like, I just, I mean, more than anything, it just adds to, like, I don't fear fuck all now. Like, that was a horrible situation to go through. <sighs> um, yeah, but I've gone through it, and... It just, just adds to you, doesn't it? Yeah, it builds character. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I think of uh, I think of that picture. Have you seen the picture of the lion? You know what I'm saying? He's got all those scars and yeah. shit. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like, that's a lion with some some, some experience, it's a story. Bro. It's a story to it's tell, story, man. We've dog. been there and we've done it. Um, yeah, it's a story to tell. And that's what wait, that's what life's all about for me. Um, you know, I, wa- I want to leave a legacy behind, you know? Um, and I think my, like, my legacy is not being the best fighter in the world. But it's been the most determined fighter in the world. I've been through, like, I've, I've been banned from boxing. I've had all that nightmare with promoters. I've had so many opportunities to quit quit fighting, and I haven't. I've stuck in there. And, event, like, you know, I went out to Miami, Fort Palomino, and then I got rewarded with a work visa to come out here and do the job I love uh, in Miami. Like, that's my reward, you know. I had my path. I stuck on my path. And... That's what I want to be remembered for, you know. I'm not. I'm not the most skillful fighter in the world, but you will fail to find someone more determined than me. That's amazing. You know, 100. percent And it's like, listen, yeah. There's only going to be a small percentage of people that are going to make that that elite, elite, elite level. But mm-hmm. in the process of going for it, how much do you learn about yourself mm-hmm. going for it? You know what I mean? Just getting after it. You know, like mm-hmm. it makes you so much. I feel like it levels you up just as a human. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> right, I'm in the same bro, bro. I didn't do a lot of the things that I wanted to accomplish. You know, I wanted to be, I wanted to get to the UFC. You know what I mean? I wanted to win the world title. I wanted to be the bantamweight champ. I had all these visions, and yeah, I fell super short. But in the process of falling short, like I found so many other great things, and and I learned so much about myself. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, a lot of the fight game, fight game as well. It's you know, circumstance. There's so much luck involved. Oh my gosh, right? like, and and I don't like saying that, like. But there is. <laughs> it's so much luck. If your face fits, injuries, like I say, you know, staying active. There's so many different things that can affect a fighter's career. And, you know, if you just, like with me, like I had my license taken away. I've had injuries. I've had two you know, bad operations. I've had shop- shoulder operation, wrist operations. I broke my jaw. But I've just, I've never let it stop me. Like, and... You know, if you, if, if, you, if you can't get inspired or motivated from, from my story, you're just a hater. That's what I can say to people. Because Hell if yeah. I, if I, like, I, lo- I love, like, Mike Bispin. Oh, my God. Mike Bispin. My favorite. What a guy. Like, what a guy. Like, if you cannot get inspired and motivated from a person like that, there's something wrong with you, man. He's the best. You know, when he first, you know, when I loved him the most is when he got knocked out by Dan Henderson yeah. and he came back and he didn't give a fuck. No, he didn't. He yeah, didn't he give did. a I fuck. Love that. He I never love got that. the memo. I love it. And before I met English people, I didn't understand the English banter. Yeah. So when I used to watch Ultimate Fighter, I used to hate him, bro, against Dan Henderson. I just didn't understand <laughs> the banter, too. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, the, yeah, and then yeah. when I moved to Thailand, and all my friends are English and Australian now, so yeah. I kind of get it. Just take the piss all the just time. Just all yeah, the time. Yeah, That's yeah. all it is. Like, yo, they don't love you if they're not taking the piss, you know? I even know how to talk like you guys, dog. I talk more like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. But, bro, Michael Bisping, when he came back and he fought Dennis Kong after getting knocked out mm-hmm. by Henderson, he came out with the same energy, like, yeah. screaming at the camera. Yeah. And ever since then, he just won me over. He came back, beat the shit out of Dennis Kong. Bro, lost every big fight after that that was going to get him to the title. Fought Chael Sonnen, and lost. Mm-hmm. Cra- ra- crazy decision, you know, lost. Got his eye knocked out. By Vitor Belfort with a spinning wheel kick, the ju- the crazy Vitor Belfort, the unstoppable Vitor 2.0, dog. Nobody was gonna beat that guy. Nah. And he came back and won the title on two weeks' notice, dog. He came off a movie set. That's mad, he dog. said he was eating, drinking beer, and eating yeah, fried yeah, yeah. chicken. Got yeah. off the set and went out there and got the job done because it was like a culmination of his life's work. I feel like yeah. when he won yeah. that title, like it didn't matter that it was a two-week nah. camp. He'd been training his whole life for that moment. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I um. I mean, I've watched it a few times, but his documentary and um, like he said about after the Dan Henderson fight, because that was a horrible knockout, <sighs> wasn't it? And his dad, his dad, though, his, you know, his dad was chatting us on this documentary and he just said, you know, he got back home and Mike Bisping was like, right, it's done now. I can't change it. You know, what will be will be. Let's get back to it. And like to have that strength 
mental strength is just like you know i i totally respect that because you know I, obviously i've lost fights and it it kills you for weeks and uh, let alone a bad knockout like that, which is just getting watched by everyone <laughs> like, and still is being watched by everyone. To be able to just go, do you know what? It's done now. Let's move on. Wow. Incredible mental strength. And then he fought his ass off. And then even though, and then like, yo, the number one contender fights he'd lost after that. Like, yeah, like he'll be like on a three fight winning streak, you know? Yeah. Had this huge fight. Boom. It's like, oh my gosh, bro. But he's a whoa. He just kept chipping away. Yeah. Kept chipping away, you know? One of my favorite uh, fighters of all time, I would say, 100%. Mm -hmm. I was gutted when he fought GSP. Yeah. Because uh, I love GSP too. Mm -hmm. But Bisping, just his personality too. His personality yeah. is like, his, yeah. he's just so gangster with it. Like, I remember when he <laughs> fought, uh, he always was hilarious. Like, I remember yeah. when he fought, Luke, before we was going to fight Luke Rockhold the first time, he's like, well, listen, I sparred Luke Rockhold like five years ago. Let's just say I'm the uncrowned Strike Force champion, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's always man. had a good banter, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh man, so England now. So how long you been in Miami? A hundred percent, like living here full time. Like I've been about... here for about seven months now. Oh, not yeah, too much, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah. How you like in Miami, I like, bro? It, this is a dope ass city, I right? It, Tell me the city isn't the shit. I love it. I, like, <laughs> I never ever want to go. Well, I never want to go back to England. <laughs> oh. Nice. Um, yeah, I just like I say, it's the, the opportunity. Obviously, it's a beautiful place. Yeah, the weather's beautiful, but for me. It's the opportunities, you know, it's the connections, it's the people you're meeting on a daily basis, you know, it's, it's the fighters you're, you know, you're getting to work with. Like I say, I'm living the dream, man. I'm out here, you know, I'm, I'm not bothered about being a rich, rich man. If I get to live my life like this, you know, and get to do what I want to do, I've just got a little job uh, at a new gym on Miami Beach, so I'm coaching people, and I love oh, nice. that, I love that. Um, What's the name of the gym? So it's, it's actually going through a transition at the minute. It's been open about three weeks. So it's West Avenue Boxing at the minute, but they're actually looking to change the name. So, um, But yeah, I've been doing classes there, one-on-ones nice, on well. there. Um, you know, at the end of the day, for us fighters, we need an exit strategy as well. And I feel like the most important thing for fighters, I mean, there's a big mental health thing on fighters um, because I don't know if you're anything like me, but after a fight, you're like, what, do I, what what happens next? Me and Steve talked about this. Yeah, yep. yeah what happens next? And you, you just feel like your purpose, you, you feel a bit lost. So to have something else out here has really, really made me happy. Like it's really made me feel settled, feel like I'm, you know, I should be here because I've got something else. I haven't just got the fighting and then I'm just sitting around. That's tough. That's yeah. very important, bro. It's yeah. so important to have other things besides yeah. just fighting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 100%. Yeah. And an exit strategy, which mm -hmm. is big for fighters, bro. And you got, you know, you have, you got guys that are just like, oh, I'm just going to mm -hmm. fight. And, you know, that's what I do. And it's like, mm -hmm. I know, bro. But, you know what I mean? Like, uh, being able to, coaching is great. I feel like yeah. coaching is the best. Um, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, um, it's very selfless work. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's, that's a good. It's a good out for us. You've got to love out, it, and, you know. And I think I've, I've like drawn a little bit of like inspiration and that from from being around Tigri because like if someone was to say to, to Tigri tomorrow, you've got to fight, he'd fight. <laughs> that guy is like we said he's earlier, so he's passionate. He's always training. He just loves the the sport so much, um, and you can see that you know the passion. Is coming out when he's training other people, and and uh, you know I'm taking that. I'm like, yeah, no, like I I love this sport. I love this sport. I love to be able to give to other people, you know, my knowledge and, and everything else. So um, that's definitely my exit strategy from fighting. Staying in the game still. I think like I feel like fighters who just completely try and walk away from the game, they're the ones that really struggle because. Let's face it, the highs and the lows, and it's we're not normal people, man. We don't go through normal stuff. Like we said bef before earlier, we went through all that COVID stuff, having to quarantine, all all to get in the ring and fight. Um, we're not normal people, so um, just going and getting a nine till five job where, you know, on a building site or, you know, with all due respect to people who do that, we, we would struggle, <laughs> really struggle. People think I'm crazy or people think we're crazy, right? <laughs> you talk to a normal person, like, you fight, you get in a ring, you're just crazy. And I'm like, you go to an office <laughs> and work till 5 p.m. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's like life is about perspective, yeah, dog. Perspective. You know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. I'm just like, it's just yeah. different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Different sides of the apple, mm -hmm. I guess, right? I just, yeah, it's... 
having that, I don't know, I, I don't know if you can call it fear. Like I need a little bit of fear in my life, a little bit of, it makes you feel alive, doesn't it? Yeah, you need somebody who wants to fuck you, like kick your ass in the yeah, week. Like, you, know, you wake up in the morning knowing somebody wants to kick your ass or something different. Like you know? people are like, oh, I don't know how you train two or three times a day. I'm like, right, in, in like eight weeks, I'm going to get in the ring in front of thousands of people and I could get my ass kicked. That's motivation enough. That gets me out of bed in the morning. Um, you don't need any more than that. Trust me. No, there's somebody that somebody the guy. There's somebody who his the best thing like the best thing that would happen is he wants to see you like he wants to be on top of your dead body dancing. You know, yeah. there's a guy who's training for that moment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's uh-huh. like, yeah, with the mental health thing. Um, I call it like idle hands the devil's playground. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's the thing with fighting, especially like after a fight. Yeah. Um, what was um Steve was talking about it that uh that post fighter depression. You know, like when you get that, I think what, you know, it is like we're dull almost, you know, yeah. from the, from the, even the bonds you get, like the friendships you get through training is so much stronger, you know, yeah. than the regular friendships. Mm-hmm. So it's something about like breaking the sweat yeah, together. Yeah, it's like family, man. Like when, weird, when yeah. I know, you know, if I have a down day out here now, I know to go to Young Tigers, to the gym and be around all my fight, all my fight family, because it does, this positivity breeds positivity. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And just being around them people who are we're all striving for that same goal. Um, and it really rubs off on each other. And it makes me, I walk out of that gym with a smile on my face, like, yeah, I needed that. No, 100%, um, man. Yeah, yeah. And then, the, and then like, uh, the winning, the, the thrill of a win is so, uh, it's so, like you were saying, it's so hard to replicate. So it's like, what's next? You know, like uh, that feeling when they, you know, like yeah. the locker room feeling backstage. <sighs> you just uh, like, well, yeah. eat, for even like, you know, for, for like the three, four, five, six days after a fight, you're on a, you're, you're on a bit of cloud nine. And then, you know, what goes up has to come back down, doesn't it? And yeah. it, after like, I don't know, week, 10 days, you're like, right, what's next? And it, it's such a, it's such a weird feeling to explain to someone, but it's almost like, where's, you know, that void? Like, oh, what, you know, what's next? What do I do now? Um, so it's extremely important, yeah, to, to find something that, that I have the passion because fighting's not good. I'm not what I'm really fighting until I'm 80. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want to, you know? <laughs> no. If you could, I mean, I wouldn't be bad. <laughs> yeah. You could be like yeah. the oldest fighter ever, yeah. you know? Now, now you're hitting new marks, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But hopefully it's not by Bare choice. I mean, yeah, oh my gosh. That's the only thing with Bare Knuckle. The, um, so I wonder, how long has it been around for you think like uh, since the new revolution has? It's been like five years now. Five years now, So right? I think like, you know, no one... No one really knows because we're all coming from like a combat sport background, like yeah. me, professional boxing, you know, MMA, professional MMA, Muay Thai, kickboxing. You know, we're all at the minute, we're all pretty experienced and we've been in a lot of hard fights. You're going to get fighters now. Like, I see the tryouts here in Miami like three weeks ago. Oh my God, it was packed, absolutely packed. And you're now getting people who don't want to do boxing, don't want to do MMA. They want to go straight into bare knuckle and they want to train for bare knuckle. Like, so it's a new sport now. So you're going to, like in the next five years, this is going to be massive. Like you're going to have all these people who, young kids, you know, 80, 19, 20, 21, going into bare knuckle. Um, how long their careers are going to last? No one really knows. Yeah, because that's the one. Unless you can learn how to like, unless there's going to be a new style that evolves yeah, from yeah. like, like kind of like baboons kind of forming as he goes, exactly, you know, yeah, like yeah, not yeah, get hit yeah. or he's not coming out of these fights too scathed, right? No, no, like, and, and that's the thing, like, you know, look, I look at my scars and cuts as badge of honor and everything else and I like being in great fights. But like I said earlier, you know, it doesn't always win fights. So, you know, Palomino has got the bare knuckle style, you know, down, man, because yeah. he just hit, doesn't get hit. Or does he still break his hands after or his hands? Has, I, everybody's hands are swollen after I see yes. you guys after the fights. I always see that's like un, unavoidable, right? The way yeah. the hands, the way your hands get swollen up after. Yeah, it's um. So he broke his hand. Uh, the last fight before his last fight, he broke his hand. Um, and then <laughs> he re-broke it in the last fight as well. Yeah. Um, and it's like like with Steve. Steve first round, boom, broke his hand. He's had he's had to have two hand operations. Um, now to fix that first round, bang, broken hand. Um, it's as easy as that. Um, but that's why we love bare knuckle because it's it's so different. If something like that can happen, you know, at the end of the day, Palomino, as good a fighter as he is, breaks his hand in the first round. The threat level is still the same, so it's yeah, like the yeah. same level of a, yeah, of a risk. Know, of risk. Yeah, it's you know, and 
you find out about yourself. <laughs> yeah, like I kept, I had a, I kept breaking that finger. Of my first two, my first two bare knuckle fights. The first, the first fight, I broke that finger, and then I had like a, uh, not a cast, but like a, almost something to straighten it out. And I got back into training, and then I re-broke that again in the next fight. So by the time my next bare knuckle fight come about, it still hadn't healed up. So before the fight, I was like 20 minutes before the walk-on. I've just injected it with lidocaine, couldn't feel it, and I've just gone in there and, and fought. <laughs> so I couldn't feel it at all. It worked. It definitely worked. So you want to be a fighter, huh? <laughs> do what you got to do. <laughs> do what you got to do. Wow. Oh man. oh, man, that was a good one. Yeah. My man. Anyways, my brother, I really appreciate you coming down wow, for the podcast, you, man. This was a great chat, yeah. bro. Yeah, no, I've really enjoyed it. So the bare knuckles. So we'll finish up with a few more things, man. Like when you do your hands, right? Do you do you condition your hands now for your fights more than when you were boxing and stuff like this? Do you try to focus on that or is that? Or... Yeah. Yeah. At the gym, we have a thing called, um, I don't know if you've seen it, that Japanese Makawari board. So I it's like a got... bit of wood, like on almost like a spring. Mm. Um and I think, like, I think it, more than anything, it's a bit of a mental thing as well. Because, like, after every training session, we're whacking that. And it's, like, it's a bit of a, like, do you know what I mean? Getting you... Because using gloves and on the bags and that and then going and whacking that piece of wood. <laughs> yeah. I think it's good for you mentally. But it's also good for your hands because... Like it builds calluses? Yeah, calluses, man. Yeah, like, at the start, when I first doing bare knuckle, my hands were just tearing to bits. Um, yeah. Whereas, you know, now they're calloused up and... What about when you hit the bag and stuff? Do you hit bag bare knuckles? Do you hit the bag and pads like with MMA gloves or something? Or? Yeah, I like to use. I like. I actually like to use MMA gloves for on the pads and the bags because I feel like with bo with a boxing glove, um, you know, this is something that p people are pretty surprised about when I when I tell them about bare knuckle. You know, obviously with a boxing glove, you can land the glove quite awkwardly. With bare knuckle, you need to land everything on your two knuckles. So. Oh. You need the MMA gloves to be turning them shots in because it's no good being on the pads and the bags. Yeah, like, like and a then false go, sense of security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you need to be going in there and throwing these shots as as if you would in a fight. So um, yeah, I like using MMA gloves. And for sparring too, how do you guys spar with? Uh, just I spar with gloves on. We Big gloves, yeah. Just so you can get the work in. Yeah, the rounds. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so you can get the rounds, and obviously, you know, you don't want to be getting cut. And oh yeah, the MMA gloves will still cut Yeah, you. yeah. Um, you know, and things like that. But, you know, we, like, again, another thing coming from British boxing, the clinch was just totally new to me. And mm. I, I learned the hard way, man, Lewis Palomino. Because um, I'm a come forward fighter. I like to get in close and I like to fire off. And as soon as I got close enough, he was just clinching me up and ripping uppercuts into my face. And, and, Going into that fight, I thought, oh, the clinch will be fighting. I'll roll out and everything else. But, like, obviously not coming from that MMA background. When he gets you in that clinch, it's very hard to get out of. He's strong and, it, you know, that experience is very hard yeah. to get out of. And I took that for granted. Because yeah. it's like a different type of clinching too, right? From the boxing with like yeah. the big gloves. And then how do you guys, like, you kind of well, like... Well, you don't, like, for just me... Just kind of, like, cover up. Like, you kind of, yeah. like, do the overhook, you know? Yeah, like... For me, I don't even, you know, I don't even look for the clinch when I'm sparring because that's just not something you can do. So it's getting to that point now where, where I'm sparring and I'm and I'm looking for it. and Because I, I want to use it as well. That's, like, you yeah. know, I want to use it. Um, so, yeah, British boxing, you know, you're so, as soon as you sort of tie up, referee breaks you like that. So there's no clinching at all. Mm, gotcha. um, and it's not the dumb thing to just be walking into boxing gyms and start clinching and whacking people. So this is where it's important to be, like I spar a lot of MMA fighters, Muay Thai fighters, because I need that uh, different style of style of fighting. You yeah, know I mean? definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Wow, that was great, bro. I think we hit a bunch of great stuff, man. That was a yeah, great man. little chat, my yeah, brother. Man, hey, I cool. appreciate the time, man. Thank you very much, great, bro. I enjoyed Thank that, you man. Thank you for telling the story, Enjoy man. That. Thank you. So coming down from England, you're here in Miami. What's going on now? I said you were saying you got the stem cells, um, yeah. doing some stem cell treatment. How's that going? Yeah, so I had my first my, my first session about, what, three, four weeks ago. I got another session in about a week. Um, I mean, look, stem. I, I hadn't even heard of stem cell yeah. uh, before I come to here, but it's like the new, everyone's like, I've had it in my shoulder, I've had it here, and it's worked. Um, so, you know, I was speaking to this doctor. He said he'd never done it on someone's on the on his face or the scar tissue on their face before. Let's try it. Let's see what results we get. So, um, yeah, he's as excited as what I am. 
Um, and then if it works, all fighters will go there and be like, yeah, <laughs> stem cells. Hell so, yeah. And let's just hope it, it brings a bit of longevity to my career. Because at the minute, like, you know, my last fight, I got caught with a flick jab and it just opened up all my, yeah. all the scar tissue. It's so, even Fuck. the doctor said before the fight, he was like, I can flick you. <laughs> Your cuts will open up. And... You know, it's not so much the, the pain or anything like that, but it's the blood going in your eyes. You're blind. Like, yeah. you're blind. Oh, shit, yeah. Like, you and just... That, you deal with that now? With the, oh, I never even thought about that. So you get the blood in your eyes. You've had that when you're scrapping, when the blood's getting in your eyes? Happens all the time. Or, like, my last three fights, it's, it's happened. And, like, you know, you're getting cut and you're constantly there, like, trying to get the blood out of your eyes all yeah. the time. Um and as well, where it's only five two-minute rounds, you know, you lose the first and second round. You're chasing because I'm cut and I've got blood going in my eyes and I'm blind and everything else. It's just not enough time to adjust and sort of, you know, and come back. So it's it's difficult. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that the stem cell is going to do something. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll just see. Yeah, for sure. But any, anything, anything. Anything that helps, we'll take it. You know what I'm saying? We'll keep that shit rolling, bro. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Anything yeah. to keep the career going, dog. That's it, man. All right, so we got, uh, we're, we're in August now. Next fight coming up. Any plans? What do you, when are you looking to make your return to the BKFC circle? So um, um, I have actually been sp- uh, speaking to BKFC the last couple of days. And, and you know, obviously the, the last fight I had, like, fight of the night, fight of the year contender in my last fight. I want that immediate rematch. I want oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want that uh, for two reasons. Because it was honestly the worst decision. I, I don't know how they give it to the other guy. Well, I do because he was the hometown guy and everything else. But that being said, like secondly, what a great fight it was. And I, like I said earlier, I want to leave a legacy behind. So if this, if we have a good second fight, I'm down for a trilogy. I want to be in these, you know, let's be a, the first bare knuckle fighters to do a trilogy, you know, yeah. leave our legacy, defining fights. Um, but he's gone completely quiet. Um, he doesn't want it. So He's gone MIA. <laughs> so, you know, the, and the thing is for me now, I'm going to cut whether I'm in with whoever I get in with, I'm going to cut. So I'd rather wait and be in big fights, <laughs> you know, so I, I'm not taking all the damage and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. So 100%, um, I'd rather wait for a big fight to come along than just go in there with someone I can blow away. But I'm going to get cut. I'm going to get cut. Like, what's the point? It just means I'm six months on the sidelines again. So that's why I said, you know, earlier about perhaps, you know, doing the glove boxing now. I mean, I, I can be licensed here in America. Obviously, back home, I'm... I had my license taken away, didn't I? Oh, you can still fight here. Yeah, so I can fight oh, here. Let's go, yeah, dog. So, let's get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that'd be pretty cool. Like, yes. I, haven't, I haven't boxed for six years since losing my license, so it's a good little story. I come back and started boxing again in America. Yeah, that'll be dope. I yeah. think for sure. I didn't, yeah. wasn't sure with the license thing. I didn't know you can get a license here. Then yeah. you're gonna get that yeah. license here, bro. Yeah. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? And who knows? Like. If, a social media fight or something. They're the, they're the fights that make the money. Oh my God, dog. That's what we got to do. I got to get on this podcast and yeah. start trashing all these yeah. TikTokers, that's, bro. Just have them come challenge that's me. That's where the that. money's at. Yo, I need to yeah. get this TikTok yeah, money, yeah, dog. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, 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 that's some the world we live in. Knuckle. Some of them are fighting bare knuckle. That Bryce you know? Hall. Um, that's yeah, crazy, so, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These boys yeah, are trying to get into yeah. bare knuckle. Everybody wants to be top G's, dog. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Isn't it crazy? With Everybody wants to fight, but... I don't know. How do you feel about the whole influencer fighter thing, dog? That's like a I'm, that one has me. It, there's the money in the eyes, but I don't like these guys training for a year or two and then acting like they're all like like they put in this work. Yeah. And it's like, yo, it's easy to fight when you're gonna make a million dollars your first time, bro. This is yeah. what pisses me off. I mean, like, you know, not going, hating, but you know, yeah, going to the whole Jake Paul thing. Um, you know, obviously he's come from Disney. <laughs> you know, is is he's look, he's got all the money in the world to, to make him a good fighter, especially in boxing, you know, boxing like three years with all that money behind you for the best training, best nutrition, best of best of the best. You're going to get good. You're going to get better. You've got to, like, there's no way you're not. But at the same time, like he fought obviously that Tommy Fury and I thought he, he, he looked like he'd improved, but then that Nate Diaz fight the other day, I thought it was horrendous. I thought he, he, he bossed it for two rounds and then he just gassed out. He just gassed out and resorted. Like, I think he threw about four jabs for the rest of the fight, just loading up with the right hand. It was unlicensed boxing at best, really. 
<laughs> to be honest, like you and know, he's talking like he's been training for fifteen. He, he, but this is I don't mind that, like you said, because he's fighting hard. But yeah. but then he talks like he's this fifteen year veteran yeah. and he's suffering from all this pain. And Call it what training. it is. Call it what it is. It's you know, white collar, unlicensed celebrity boxing. It's like he got out of the ring, didn't he? And he started calling Canelo out, and you're like, bro. You couldn't knock out a 155-pound UFC fighter. The trouble you got, though, Emilio, is that, like, the casual fight fans, like, don't know. So they're like, they see him, oh, he's winning these fights and he's beating Nick Diaz. And they're believing the hype because they don't know fighting, you know. Put him in with Canelo Alvarez and just... <laughs> That's stupid. Yo, you put him with any featherweight. You'll put him with, like, a 135-pound... Yeah. You know, so yeah. you put him with a random Mexican from yeah. fucking uh, La that gym in Las Vegas and see what happens. Like, well, I said he, he's w w wait to see fight at 185 or whatever. He wouldn't win an English title back home. He wouldn't win an English title as a boxer back home in England. No way. The level, you know, English, British level, it's, it's pretty much world level. We've got a very, very good boxing and he wouldn't win an English title back home. I don't think Tommy Fury would, who he fought. Um, and that's the level we're talking about. Do you know what I mean? But they're earning like twenty million. They're making the big bucks though. Yeah. It's not what, it, what is it? Not what you know. It's who you know. And like, what, who wants to see you? I guess the thing people. Well, everybody wants to see him lose. So he does a good job of making you hate him. I hate you know. And like, not only that, look, the demographic is like thirteen to sixteen year olds who have watched him on Disney and see him being a complete prick on social media and everything else. So you've got all these like teenagers watching the pay per views, and that's. You know, oh, yeah, he, boxing fans aren't probably even watching nah, that. You know man, boxing nah. fighters. Even my friends that fight MMA, I'm like, yo, did you watch the Nate Diaz, Jake Paul? Versus? They're like, what? What are you talking about? Nah. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, it's not It's not fight fans. Fight fans aren't interested in that fight. Fight fans are interested in Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence. Yeah. You know, them legendary fights. <sighs> that was a good way. That's a good way to say it. Like, uh, how you better be good, bro. Like, you have all the... Bro, with those millions of dollars, you can get the best trainer, the mm. best food. Like... You can start training like a world star athlete where it might have taken a guy 20 yeah. years to get to be able to get the type of training. It'll take a guy to be like, bro, guys will have to train from five years old with shitty coaches for mm. the first 10 years. Maybe yeah. you have the wrong coach for eight years. Exactly. Then you move away to Las Vegas and you find a good coach. You're like, mm. damn, I had this crazy coach for five years. You could have been learning wrong for five. You know, mm. all these things that regular people have to yeah. go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just right away just Googled the best MMA trainer. Hire, I mean, he got to get to Google. Best boxing trainer, got him. Best nutritionist, got him. Best strength and conditioning, got him. So within six, seven months, yeah, you're training like a professional. Mm. Like It's like that guys wouldn't be able to even get to that level. Like how well, much? Not, a lot of pros as well are working alongside their training. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's He gets to train. He can train full time. Yeah, yeah he like, starts off his career training yeah, three times yeah, a day like yeah. a professional. Like, what else have you got to do? Do you know what I mean? Apart from improve with your coach. Like, so... Um, yeah, he's, he, I mean, he's got to improve. There's something wrong with you if you don't improve. <laughs> There's something seriously wrong with you. So Yeah, um, for sure, man. Yeah, it is what it is, mate. It's just, like I say, it's the, it's the world It's the world we live in now, social media world. Um, unfortunately, it sort of takes it away from the real fighters, the guys that are you know, willing to fight anyone because... You know, there's a lot of emphasis, more so on professional boxing. You know, like having a having a nice shiny O. Don't mean shit. But yeah, like, like you were saying before, the the intricacies of the game when you know it. People don't even know. Like they'll be setting up guys to set up. You know, mm -hmm. like they'll be getting a guy, give him five wins, yeah. so that when you fight him, it looks like you beat a big guy with yeah. five wins, even yeah. though they knew that the guy with five wins was gonna lose to the guy with their ten wins. It's like they're going like deep level yeah. chess, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is it like, well, a million belts or? to fight for as well so like what we've got back in the uk like like to win a to win an english british title that's like the traditional route like english british european world like and to do it that way is very hard because you're fighting the best of the best but what promoters are doing now they're obviously getting prospects ticket sellers and everything else um and they're getting them like wbc or wba Pacific European belt against a guy who's 17 and no, but you go on box rec and the guy's like never fought anyone with a winning record. But to the casual fan, oh my god, he's fighting someone 17 and no for a belt and then he wins that belt. Yeah, he's the champion of Mickey Mouse, whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? But and then he also believes it, like you're saying, that's the guy, that's the, yeah. those, and he's, and then they just been rooted to the top. They're being, and that will get hit, that will get that guy a, um, 
he'll be ranked in the top 10 in the world. And then before you know it, he's fighting for the world title and he's jumped over the English, the British, the European. He's jumped over all of that because he sells tickets. That's boxing. And that's... I know that for a fact because, like I say, I've been in it for years yeah. and that's why I don't really watch it now because I'm just like... Ugh. It's taking the... It's probably left a sour it's, taste in Yeah, mouth, yeah. You know? It's just like, you know, as a 18, 19-year-old, you go in like, yeah, I'm a professional fighter and everything else. And then a few years down the line, you're like, right, yeah. Because I did get warned at the start. People would be like, look, there's only one person who makes money in this game and it's the promoter. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. We're going to become promoters. Yeah. So I, I do that? believe, I do believe a lot more fighters need to be managers, promoters, because let's face it, promoters are coming fresh out of business school, university with all their degrees in business and everything else. And they know how to talk, like, look, you know, fighters, myself, you know, you tell me to fight someone, I'll fight them, you know, and, and they know how to talk to you, give you the spiel, yeah, this, that, you're going to be a star and everything else before, you know, they're getting exactly how they want it to be, their way. Um, yeah, fighters just get used, man. Yeah, and it's always the guys, and I, you know what's, you know what crazy, what bugs me out about the fight game? It's like, and I find this across the board, like, yeah, fighters, I mean, MMA, for me, MMA is a little bit young, boxing, but damn, we you know it's crazy with boxing, this guy Hearns was a boxer, and he's freaking screwing you over mm -hmm. and doing that shady shit. But, you know, that's what doesn't make no sense, but... um. I think like more more so with managers. I'd I'd like to see a lot more fighters be managers. I think um, yes. I do, I think we can just yeah fighters can just be looked after so much better. Um, as a boxer, I, I wasn't looked after. You know my like I say I should I should have moved up moved up a weight probably two fights before I did. But you know you're making everyone around you money boxing on TV with title fights, and that's all anyone's really interested in. Yeah, exactly, man. That's uh, it's always seems like the guys the guys involved in the sport are always the guys who didn't have the cojones to get in there. Mm. So they just do all the other stuff. So that's yeah, where you kind of like you get like the kind of these weasel lily characters because yeah. you get all the because fighters are. I mean, my thing with fighters is across the board is like we're all very like honest and brutal. Like we're fighters, right? So like we're kind of like honest with it because we, wear we just want to scrap. Sleep, we wear it all hard on our yeah, sleep, bro. Yeah. We get in a fucking cage naked and and express ourselves yeah, for fucking yeah. you know. But then you got the guys who. They want all the good stuff from the game. They want to. The, they want to stand there at the weigh-ins yeah. in the middle. The fight. They want to hold the belt up for you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you don't want to go in the kick. Like you don't want to hold up your own belt. You yeah. want to hold up somebody else's belt. So it's like yeah. a weird character that comes with that. Scene. Well, like social media is just give like oh, it's media. just it like it's just made like like I say promoters managers it's it's give them a little level of fame where they're trying to be more, more famous than the fighters are and you're like hold on you're just a manager or a promoter sit back down do your job like let the fighters have what they've trained for and what they've fought for all their life stop trying to be more famous than the fighters because that fucking irritates me bro that's yeah when you start seeing managers and promote and when you guys seeing these guys doing interviews and stuff like that you're like yo 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 we don't really need to know all that you nah, know like, like you, i call them a uh, spotlight guys yeah. you know they just want to be in the spot spotlight yeah, yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah. but they don't want to put the work dog or like or they nah. went to the gym they they wanted to fight but then they couldn't fight yeah so then they're like kind of like stuck like around say, they come out of university fresh with a business degree and know how to make money and know how all the talk and everything else but they can't do what i what what we do um so they should just sit down quietly enjoy the show let us you know let us get the the plaudits and everything else because i do see it all the time i watch a lot of youtube when i wake up in the morning i, lo I like to hear a lot of like you know boxing podcasts and things like that and yeah, it's all too many managers, promoters and stuff like that getting all the limelight and not enough of the fighters. Um, and I'm seeing more and more of that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and the yeah. social media era is getting crazy. Yeah. yeah. With everything, it's like, it's hard because you don't want to do it, but then you kind of need to because then they're not going to want to, people ain't going to want to mess with you, you know? Now they look at your Instagram as like your resume and I'm like, damn, we're, you know, like you got like. <sighs> and I just got mine deleted. Got <laughs> <laughs> For the second time. So I'm well, like. Hopefully we didn't say nothing in this podcast. Like we didn't get into no COVID or nothing. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think we, yeah. we stood pretty clear of some yeah. cancelable things, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
But anyways, my man. Oh yeah, we'll see with the with yeah. the Hearns thing. I don't want to yeah. get this. Yeah. We release this podcast and be like, nah, yo, I took you know a what? picture, right. and then my podcast gets taken I've off. I've only dog. got I've only <laughs> I've only got a thousand followers on my new one. I don't care about that. So, <laughs> hey. Uh, um, the more people who find out what that guy's really about, the better. They better need to. for everyone. The less man. people will be. Will, will, will yeah, mess yeah, with, yeah, we need yeah. less people to mess with them. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Because yeah, ignorance is bliss, dog. You don't know. And then you'll be like, I wish I would have known that. You know, mm. Somebody right now is signing a contract right now, dog. Somebody's getting told the same yeah. spiel. Yo, yeah, don't yeah. worry about this fight. There's, there's a hundred me's 10 years ago being told exactly what they want to hear in order to get their fight. So uh, another thing about this fight, so I just won the English title, right? Just won the English title. Um, and like, look, it was my first big belt. I actually went to ho on holiday to Egypt and I took the belt with me. I had it, I slept with it. I was so proud, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I got home about 10 days later and I had a letter from the British Border Control that said that they wanted the belt back. And if I wanted a replica, I had to pay 750 pounds for it, right? So, yeah, you can't I'm, even keep your belt. They don't know that. No, nah, no, nah, you can't keep it. You've got to buy your belt. Even though you've just trained your <laughs> ass off and just risked your life for it, you better pay for that belt. So, um, I've then gone sat in the matchroom office and um, I've been talked into this fight with this whole free fight contract. And Eddie Hearns give me a thousand pounds to vacate my belt so that um, two other people can fight for it. A thousand pounds, man. But at the time, I'm 23, man. I ain't got, I ain't. Got hardly any money. I'm living on my own. I'm trying to create this dream. So you, <laughs> that's good money, it, bro. Good money, a thousand pound. Like now, nah, like, oh my that's god, I can't. Purse. I give up my a belt that I give everything for for a thousand pounds. But there you go. Oh, it's been a ruthless one. But now we're in bare knuckle. You can live in that. You get that good. BKFC like say, money. I'm living you know the dream I'm now, man. I'm living the dream. I'm. I'm. You know. I lo I love this sport. That's why I'm here, still here. And left left the raps in the we left the raps in England, bro. Yeah. Now we're going the uh, <laughs> yeah. how do they wrap your man, that's wild. The way they wrap your hands, they just yeah. put like a little thing just, on your wrist, just right? By, yeah, just your wrist. Yeah, um, that's wild. My boy Will Chope, uh, when he used to fight MMA, he used to never wrap his hands, and the uh, commission used to get mad. And he just uh, put like when he fought in the UFC. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want to wrap his hands in the UFC fight, so yeah. they just put one wrap, they put one piece of tape around his wrist and then right. sign it. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I've, so seen, I've seen that wheelchair. He's done a lot of um, bare knuckle now. Bro, so, yeah, 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 dog. Um, yeah. So the first time I heard about bare knuckle, he was getting good checks to go to like England and London and yeah, stuff yeah. like this, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, did that kind of start? I feel like that's what I mean, like with the England thing, like... I remember when I was in Asia in Thailand, yeah, like people were taking big money fights in England before I heard about it in America more. I don't know. I would say that BKB BKB has been around for longer than BKFC, but BKFC has just exploded quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They Do did a good job mean? with the marketing. Yeah, the, the, what's the, the name of the owner guy? He's like a Dana White. He's like a real Dave badass. Feldman. This guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah like he's like the. A real... um, I mean, the production like so is, 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 is great. Do you know what I mean? Like it's an event, um, and that's something that. They don't do it nowhere near as well back in England. Like it's good bare knuckle fighting and all that, but it's it's a absolute event. You know, like you say that the shows at the Hard Rock are it's just massively packed. Booming. Oh, but you fought outside of the. How were the shows outside of the Florida compared for the rest so of the I state? So I fought uh, in Biloxi. I fought <sighs> Charles Bennett in Biloxi. Uh, I mean, that was in the middle of the pandemic, so it was a bit. Uh, I mean, there was there was like a limited capacity. Um, everyone hated me. They were booing USA, USA. It was funny. It was great. It was a great experience. Uh, and then my other fight was in South Carolina. Uh, at, uh, an arena there, I can't think what it was called now. Big arena, really nice place. Greenville, it was okay. a nice city. It was a nice city. Um, a lot of people, it was full. Yeah, yeah, a lot nice. of people. These BKC shows are. That's what I'm get, saying. Yeah, they got a crazy fan, in, bro. Yeah, because it just you haven't got to be a fight fan to enjoy. Nah, it. yeah, there's no stand them up ref. There is no nah. stand them up ref. Like the part that people hate in fighting, they take yeah. completely take it out. Yeah. There's like no stalling. Nah. It's just war, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I noticed too in Beer Knuckle? Like I noticed in the one fights I went to. Uh, Yo, everybody who got dropped in the first round won in the second round. Yeah. So like getting dropped means nothing, right? In nah. the beginning, I feel yeah. sometimes I almost feel like it's like the guy who gets dropped usually yeah. wins, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then like it's a little bit of adrenaline dump too. I don't yeah. know, like you try to finish the guy and then like yeah. you blow your wad and the guy finishes him, you know? Well, I like my when I fought for the world title back in the BKV back in the UK, I fought that uh, Sean George, who like I say, like legend of the game, had about twenty two bare knuckle fights, and he <sighs> dro he dropped me in the first round. And I got up, and about 20 sec seconds later, I dropped him. And it was just there. Yeah, that was a that was seven rounds. Seven rounds we were doing there as well. What? Yeah. 
Seven rounds? Why? Seven. Why seven rounds? Because it was so a title, they did or... title fights back home in England are seven fight, uh, seven rounds. Sorry. So um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> my hands. If you, like the commentary, oh. the commentary, they're like, "Oh my god, it looks like he's wearing boxing gloves. His hands are so tall." Oh. Um, my hands were horrible, man. I ended up in hospital after that fight. Um, what do you do with your hands after the fight, bro? Where do you put them? You like just, an ice or like? Just, yeah, like uh, they hurt. They're aching, right? Like yeah. you're, like, after after a fight, it's like for like that little window of adrenaline where you're like, yeah, I feel amazing, and then after that adrenaline goes, oh my, you feel God. everything, right? So like that fight, I went to my hotel and I actually went into a little bit of shock, like, and I felt freezing cold. I've got two duvets around me, I'm shivering like that, and I just like I felt like I've been hit by a bus, man. I'm just shivering so cold like that. Uh, that's People don't see that after the fights, man. Like, oh, the after the fights, yeah, dog, of yeah, those wars. Yeah, you know, boxing yeah, fights too, yeah, you feel it, yeah. huh? Like, or MMA. Like, MMA, like, the, at least I'm only getting punched in the body and the head. Yeah. Like I say, them le- like, the things that make me wince most when I watch MMA are, like, the leg kicks. Bro, I've had legs, yeah. I've had fights where, like, my fucking shins and legs, and, like, throw a couple of low kicks, and I, have, and I throw a lot of low kicks. You yeah. hit the shin, you hit the knee. <laughs> You know, and then like, yeah, like my feet are like, you got like balloon feet, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I've had those, but, but my hands have always been relatively, for me, it's just tripping you guys out because I yeah. see the hands the way they looked, you know, yeah. but it's fine. I never thought, I was like, oh yeah, I do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm kicking with my bare feet, so like, I feel you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But I don't know, bro, the hand, the, the hand I mean, how do you strength, you, you strengthen your legs? Your yeah, yeah, you, get, you throw, uh, for me, it's just kicking the bag, like you get a dead bag, you kick right. it. people do, they have tricks, like you can get like a, uh, like an iron thing and you can yeah. like kind of roll out your shins my yeah. shins are pretty good my ankles you know what i'm saying that's like your feet is what gets fucked yeah, up yeah yeah like yeah like from the ankles and shit yeah, kicking yeah, too low you know yeah. but the shin you can really get hard you know yeah but then you kick the knee or whatever you know how it, so. i think like something that palomino he's just had he's had a load of surgery and he had a toe his big toe and from all the kicking he said like he's just had problems for years with it and his wow. knee as well he's done his acl in his knee like them leg kicks man he has, and he has some of the most ruthless leg kicks in MMA history, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, horrendous. Bro, horrendous. Like, he started, like, a famous move now. Like, he was kind of, like, one of the innovators, you know? The calf kick. Yeah. It's kind of, like, his thing. And now right. it's, like, a huge right. phenomenon in the UFC. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, uh, my coaches in Thailand, we all do it, you know? But we all kind of got that from him, you know? So. Yeah. My man. Anyways, bro, my editor's gonna kill me. We could chat for. We could be. I'll be here all day. That's how it is. Like the first thirty minutes, yeah. you know. We get, and then after like an hour, and it just fucking then it doesn't stop. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Yes, yeah, so we got BKFC. No MMA for you. Jiu Jitsu. You ever rolled around? No. Or I, like like I said, because because like boxing was was our sport twenty. It wasn't yeah. MMA. Literally, was not even a thing in England. You know, twenty sure. years ago. So. Um, yeah, I think if I had had my time again and MMA was was there, I think I'd probably do it MMA yeah. to be honest because um you know the good the great thing about MMA is there's so many different ways that you can win a fight, isn't there? Like someone yeah. can be so dominant on their feet but get beat, submitted, you know, it's, it's so many different ways to get beat. Um they're weapons, man. I have the ultimate respect for MMA. It's just Are you watch it, you're a fan, right? You watch I watch it, it, I watch it more than, than boxing. boxing right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like, good. um yeah, like I say, like I watched that, um, you know, like the the Gaiji Poirier fight and <sighs> what a fight, though! Yeah, oh um, my gosh! Yeah, uh, MMA is so good because they 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 put the big fights. They don't bullshit. It's great. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like yeah. like how long we waited for the Crawford fight where they were talking about that. I've been <laughs> hearing about this fight for years. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now like MMA, boom, they make it happen, mm-hmm. bro. They get after it. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah, like yeah, like all all the top guys have got a few losses because from day one they've been fighting the best, haven't they? So yes, um, yes, yes. And I love that. And you know, at the end of the day, we, we're. I mean, Dana White's obviously mon- monopolized it with the UFC, but like, if you if you're contracted to fight, you fight you. He picks you the fights. If you say no, he will just cancel your contract, and that's how it should be. Like, stop dodging fights, put these big names together. That's what the fans want to see. And exactly. I sort of see that happening with BKFC a bit now as well, yes. which is great because, like, obviously with me, I took that massive, you know, going to fight Palomino, I lost on points, then I was straight back into another unbeaten fight, and then after that, I'm straight back into another against another unbeaten fight. Yeah, they got fight. you going after it. I like, you know, and you can probably appreciate it as well. Like being, you know, 22 years deep into a career now, I need a fight to motivate me. I can't have fights. If I know I can get in there at sixty percent and win, that doesn't interest me. I want that little bit of fear, like I said earlier, I need that. I need that where, like, if I don't perform and I don't train, I'm going to get beat here. And 
It's motivation. That's what it is. Yeah. And like you need that, like the little bit of a, something to wake up for, mm-hmm. something to excite you, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. That's how Nate Diaz talks about it. When Nate Diaz says he took like, he took a break from MMA and they were like, oh, he's like, because everybody sucked. He had that famous like post fight speech. Like he's like, yeah, I'm taking a break because y'all suck or yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's like, he was saying the same thing. So I think yeah. like the Jake Paul kind of, I don't know if he woke up for that fire. He was just collecting some bread. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, he was saying the exact same thing, like, you know, the, like something to get you going, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, brother. Man, anyways, Big Dog, once again, Thank you I appreciate much, the time, man. What else we got going on? We hit bare knuckle. We hit everything, bro. Bare knuckle, <laughs> boxing, yeah. porn. You know what I'm saying? We hit it. Oh, oh, <laughs> man of many lives, bro. We're just yeah. getting started, yeah, baby. Yeah. 32 years young, dog. 32 years. So man. I feel like, yeah, yeah. you definitely yeah. got a whole other yeah. tank in you, bro. Definitely, um, yeah, man. 30 is the new 20, for real. 1,000%. For real, dog. like, because... And it sounds funny because like people say like, would I go back to being twenty one again? I wouldn't. Like I wouldn't because I don't know shit, man. Like going forward now, I'm ready. You know? Hell yeah. Um, yeah. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go, man. Let's get it, my man. Ladies and gentlemen, Honey Badger Hour. That was a big one. Thank you guys for tuning. Where can the fans follow you and get you at? Oh yeah, because we ain't got. <laughs> so I've got a new. I've got a new. El Tornado Zero One. That's the account that I'm using at the moment. Um, I'm hope. Well, I'm hoping that my other account may appear sometime so, soon, bro. maybe. But this will be a backup account if not. Um, but who knows? I was looking for you on the. I was looking for you to send you a message to get you in the pod. I had a message, Steve. I was like, yo. <laughs> I was like, what's he just got to have Instagram? He's like, yo, I got deleted. I was like, oh, I was like. <laughs> just like that, man. Just like that. So, guys, don't mess with no, uh, watch out with the fake contracts on there. Instagram yeah. is watching. All right, Instagram, we love you. Don't cancel us. All right, YouTube, we're going to play the game, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, so El Tornado, El, uh, is it El? El, El Tornado 01. We're going to put it down on the links, yeah, guys. Yeah. Make sure to follow Tyler. All, all, right. my, all my fights are on YouTube. I also have a documentary that's on YouTube called Unbroken. It's uh, won a lot of awards. It's had like 1.3 million views. Um, and that's the build up to when I won the World Bare Knuckle title back home in the UK. Um, it's cool. It's really cool. It has all the build up to, to, you know, and all the after effects of a bare knuckle fight as well. So it's interesting. That's a heavy one. I was watching that the other day. So hell yeah. Make sure you guys check that out. Honey Badger Hour. We're out. <laughs>